For most of human time, the lower Gila River has been a lifeblood, providing intermittent water flow during seasonal rains, supporting people, plants, animals, and fish. When the settlers came into this area, they brought with them animals and plants that we're not used to or accustomed to, like horses and cattle and cats. You know, there's a lot of new words that our ancestors created to identify these animals and plants. But one thing that changed was that they cut off the river. They built a dam. And so over time, it changed the landscape of the river. These changes promoted the growth of non-native invasive species. One of those species, tamarisk or salt cedar, has caused multiple challenges for the Lower Gila River watershed and the communities within it. The Lower Gila River Collaborative was created in 2018 to reestablish native vegetation and habitat, reduce flood and fire risk, and connect local communities to the river with recreation and river-friendly development. The project that we're talking about today is along the Lower Gila River. The extent of the project is about 46 or 47 miles from the 91st Avenue water treatment plant by the City of Phoenix all the way down to Gillespie Dam. It encompasses several cities and lots of organizations and nonprofits. There have been uh, several pilot projects that have been initiated and completed in the Lower Gila River, one of which is through the Maricopa County Flood Control District. They have two pilot sites where they've done restoration on 40 acres. And what they've done is they mechanically removed salt cedar or tamarisk. In 2018, we broke ground on these sites to look at uh, the effectiveness of tamarisk removal and how that interplays with managing the floodplain. Introduced to the lower Gila River in the 1940s, Tamarisk found a foothold in the altered ecosystem. Starting in 2001, the northern Tamarisk leaf beetle was released as a biological control agent in six western states to mitigate the impacts of Tamarisk to waterways. It quickly spread to Arizona. A couple of years ago, we had noticed that a lot of the salt cedar was starting to die back and we weren't too sure if it was actually the tamarisk beetle that had made it to us or it was just the lack of water. Unfortunately, the beetle did make it to us and we were happy, but then we started to see the effects. This meant that they were defoliating them a lot quicker, leaving them to be like matchsticks above ground. So not only are we worried about the amount of beetle kill, we're also worried about what happens when wildfire hits areas that have all of the standing dead salt cedar. My experience here on the, uh, on the Gila River uh, first started in the early 2000s as a firefighter. Uh, initial attack. So I've been able to see what fire looks like here. You know, you're having uh, flame lengths 50 foot plus, so uh, extreme fire behavior. So there's, you know, definitely challenges to suppressing a fire here. I remember uh, one year of the fire started at the confluence here at Salt and Gila River, and we were told to evacuate, but we were, we didn't want to leave our houses alone. So we would stand on the on the roof and watch the fire. You know, watch how far it went, and it's scary. You might think that a desert town or, or a little ag community like Buckeye it doesn't have to worry about wildfires and forest fires, but when you have that fuel source that is the tamarisk that is uh, in as close proximity as it is to our downtown, to our wastewater treatment plant, to uh, bridges that, uh, that convey traffic back and forth down to Gila Bend. These restoration projects are reducing fire risk by creating fire breaks and also reestablishing the previous habitat, so which doesn't burn, is, is active and hot. Tamarisk, not only does it provide a fire hazard, but it also provides a flood hazard.
portions of this lower Gila River channel um, have tremendous volumes and densities of tamarisk. And when water does come through during a flood event, um, that dense tamarisk can back up water and cause damage to adjacent properties. My family and I have been farming on this specific place for over 50 years now. Where we're standing here today is often underwater anytime we have heavy rains due to the water from the Hassiampa River not being able to flow into the Gila because of just how thick the tamarisk are in this riverbed. When these floods happen, there's not only devastation to the farmland as in 93 where we just completely lost 80 acres. The other issues we run into is these flood waters, they deposit sand and river rocks in the production fields. We've seen a tremendous amount of developable land and farmland that have been significantly affected by the floodway that exists now. Uh, now you see that developable land need to be raised up out of that floodplain. So you'll see homes that are out in the middle of, of flat land that are built up on a, uh, like a six foot pedestal. My job, along with my staff and our fuels and restoration crew, is to go out into these areas along the river and start to remove the invasive species while bringing back the native plant and tree species. We feel that bringing back the willow and the cottonwood to the Gila River is, is vital because the the Otham people use willow for their basketry and the Otham are well known for their basketry and we're trying to keep that practice alive. We received a total of $15 million in funding from the state legislature and from the governor's office. And we're really excited about the opportunity to be able to put these dollars onto the ground. It's really meant to um, go directly to treatment and um, the replanting of native vegetation too. So that is something that is built into this fund that we have. I think the major challenges with these projects is gonna be is the treatment, the post-treatment, the management of it afterward, the monitoring that comes with it, um, and making sure that we continue treating these species into the future. From a land management perspective, uh, it is incredibly important that we find uh, resources to eradicate the salt cedars in the, the Gila River Basin. There is this inherent ongoing argument like, oh, well, that's going to be a forever gardening project. Well, we're trying to mitigate flood and, flood and fire. We're <laughs> and we can't just not do anything. Like we, we have to do something about it. Our hope with these restoration efforts is to bring back the ecosystems that were lost. This means that community members will be able to utilize plant and tree species that will be thriving once the restoration efforts are successful. If my son decides that he wants to follow in the footsteps and become the fifth generation to farm along the Gila River in the Buckeye Valley, it's these projects and the tamarisk removal that will ensure that he's not constantly worrying about losing more of this farm to floodwaters. We're always going to be here, the Akamal Otham and the Piposh. We are not going to be going anywhere. You know, we have been living in this area for thousands of years. We have a great respect for where we're living. The overall vision for the Lower Gila River Collaborative is really to help to restore these pieces, bring the functioning back, bring the people back, allow more opportunities for recreation, and allow more time for the species recovery as far as not only the vegetation, but also the wildlife species. The Lower Gila River Collaborative is dedicated to restoring resilience to this imperiled waterway. This large undertaking will require sustained effort from many partners. As a result, a hub for scientific inquiry and knowledge sharing has taken root within the ongoing restoration efforts.